Athens, a lively city set in historic surroundings. Lika Vitios, a 277-meter-high limestone rock, dominates the city. It towers up above several buildings, and on its peak, a small chapel. The capital of Greece has a long history. Athens was founded 3,500 years ago and has had its golden age during Greek antiquity under the democratic rule of Pericles. At that time, the symbol of one of Europe's most influential cultures was created. Greek's national sanctuary, the Acropolis. At the foot of Temple Mountain, we travel past the Herodes Atticus Theatre that originally had a wooden roof. In the 5th century BC, the entrance to this ancient temple city was the Propyline, a central building with several gateways and a large number of massive columns. A century ago, there were stone buildings on the hill above the Athenic plain. Unfortunately, almost all of them were destroyed during the Second World War. The Persians burned down a temple that was located here in 480 BC. However, 30 years later, further buildings were constructed. It took nine years to build the great temple of the goddess Athena, the Parthenon, that was completed in 438 BC. Unique among all other Greek temples, with its imposing appearance and artistic decoration, this temple signified the great influence and power of ancient Athens. With its striking, majestic appearance and timeless elegance, it was more magnificent than any other building in Greece. Today, its 42 Doric columns are located closer to each other than when the temple was first built. Each of the columns that originally supported its roof were tilted inwards. Six female figures, the Caryatidis, support the southern hall of the Ionic temple of Erectown that stands on sacred ground close to the main temple. Since the beginning of the 4th century, the mythical kings Kekrops and Erechtyr were worshipped here until the city's subsequent decline. Legend has it that during the contest between the gods, Poseidon left the imprint of his trident on a rock upon which Athena created an olive tree.
Throughout its history, the temple served many purposes, and the Turks, somewhat disrespectfully, once transformed the Erektion into a harem. However, the Acropolis continues to be the origin of Western culture. Opposite Temple Mountain is the Aeropag that offers a comprehensive view of the Acropolis both day and night. Many come here to enjoy the sunset, to be transported back to another time, to the ancient history of a unique metropolis. Just off the tourist trail some years ago, German archaeologists discovered the ancient Keramikos Cemetery, a place of tranquility and contemplation. This was once the setting of national funeral ceremonies, and many of these ancient gravestones doubtless hold the secrets of many a Greek tragedy. The adjoining museum contains many objects that were discovered in this area, and which have helped to provide an understanding of the burial rites of ancient Greece. The heart of this ancient city of Athens was its market square, the Archaea Agora, a focal point of public life. This was a place of political institutions where gods had their temples and heroes their statues. It was here that business was done and tales were told. Today it requires a combination of both knowledge and imagination to fully appreciate the history of these ruins. Cafes, small stores and restaurants dominate the old town. The imposing metropolis is the main Greek Orthodox cathedral in Athens. A total of four architects designed this cathedral whose walls comprise the remains of no less than 70 former sacred buildings. Here, the ruling classes of Athens are wed Government ministers swear their allegiance, and church services are broadcast. And next to the cathedral, a real gem. A small medieval bishop church. The most beautiful Byzantine church in Athens. A masterpiece of Greek art. It's a pleasure to stroll along the fascinating narrow alleys of the old town. Eight years in construction, the city now has an additional form of transport, the Athens subway. During its construction, more than 32,000 archaeological discoveries were uncovered, some of which are exhibited in each of the subway's six subterranean stations. This large market reflects the life of this lively city. Goods are offered for sale, haggled over and finally purchased, from early morning until late at night.
everything is well presented. Meat, fish and seafood. Farmers and fishermen bring their fresh produce here each day. And there's also a large and appetizing selection of olives, fresh fruit and vegetables. All the essentials of Greek cuisine. Amid the city's hustle and bustle is the National Park. Small pathways and ponds are set in the shade of palms and a variety of old trees. An oasis of tranquility and relaxation. In front of the old royal castle and today's parliament, the Evzonen stand guard. The presidential guards wear white kilts, tights, embroidered cardigans and pointed red shoes. Great sporting events were held in ancient Athens every four years. Due to the Olympic Games of today, this ancient location has been fully restored. In the centre of the city's noisy traffic is an ancient monument that is 1,900 years old and it stands 18 metres high, the Pili Adrianu Gate. The Roman Emperor Hadrian had it built in 124 AD. Directly beyond the archway is the entrance to the Olympic Zeus Temple, whose colossal columns have remained impressive right through to the present day. During Roman occupation, a new city district was built between the old town and the new town. It has a fine view of the Acropolis. The foundations of this huge temple were built in the 6th century BC and completed during the rule of the Emperor Hadrian. In recent times, the remains of Roman baths and dwellings have been discovered. Built in 1860, the National Archaeological Museum contains the largest collection of Greek antiquities in the world. It's Greece's version of the Paris Louvre. Large exhibition rooms display the treasures of many historic epochs. The various images of stone and bronze recapture the cultures of many a bygone age. The artistic reproduction of both humans and gods highlights man's relentless pursuit for beauty and perfection. Nature also played an important part in past cultures. Maybe that's the reason why the treasures of ancient Greece captivate all those who see them. Mm -hmm. 
Since antiquity, Piraeus has been Athens' main harbour, the gateway to more than 2,000 Greek islands, and today with a large choice of ferryboats. Loud and frenetic, vital and busy. This is home to almost 800 Greek shipping companies who ply their trade around the world's oceans. In contrast, there's a large yachting harbour in which small boats and the luxurious yachts of the rich and famous lie at anchor. Next, a short car journey out of the city to an important location of recent times. Since 1893, the 6,000-metre-long Corinth Canal has connected Piraeus Harbour with the Ionic Sea. Between the Greek mainland and the Peloponnese, and at the bottom of a nearby hill, are the extensive ruins of ancient Corinth. Once a magnificent building, only a few of the Doric columns of the Apollo Temple that dates back to the 6th century have survived. Due to its favourable location and fertile soil, 3,000 years ago during the Neolithic period, the first settlements were established here. However, as with several other prehistoric communities that inhabited this region, the earlier buildings of Corinth were completely destroyed, although the reason for this is unknown. Around the turn of the millennium, Rome also recognized the unique strategic value of the city. They designated Corinth as the seat of the Roman governor of the province of Achaia. Important archaeological finds have been discovered in what was formerly an urban area. They're now exhibited in a local museum. The exhibition features objects from the artistic beginnings of the Neolithic era to masterpieces of archaic sculpture and wall and floor mosaics. The museum provides a comprehensive insight into the city's artistic history and former prosperity. Since Roman times, the hill above Corinthos has been the location of numerous building works by various occupying forces. The Byzantines, Franken, Turks and Venetians each made their mark here. From the ancient fortresses of Acre Corinth, there's a splendid view across the former city to the sea. From Zaya Marina, there's a hovercraft service to the Poros, Idra and Spetsi Islands, as well as to the harbours of the Peloponnese. The ferryboat leaves the harbour slowly and speeds up when it reaches the open sea. After a short journey, we reach the island of Idra. There are no motor vehicles here, only donkeys and mules.
the small harbour entrance is still guarded by an old cannon, a remnant of the Albanian refugees who lived here in the 16th century. The island of Idra consists of granite rock and no fresh water, but the harbour in the main town is truly enchanting. On the quayside, donkeys await the next arrival of boats and their cargo of passengers and goods. Here, time means nothing. There are many open-air cafes and restaurants on the quayside. In the late afternoon and evening, the island's inhabitants begin to merge with the tourists. Around 3,000 people live on the island, most of them earning their living from fishing and tourism. Visitors to the island don't come here for its beaches, but to enjoy its special ambience that has, for many years, also attracted a large number of international musicians and artists. The small monastery on the harbour is the cultural side of Idra and is always popular with visitors. Its design is quite superb. As it was impossible to grow anything on the island's unyielding rock, the Albanian refugees travelled the seas and traded with Russia and Western Europe. This brought them much prosperity. Ship owners and sea captains had splendid villas built on the scant hillsides of the harbour. And in 1821, the island had a population of 30,000. Everyone returns to Athens with many fine memories of their visit to Idra. The journey along the winding coast road travels to the southernmost tip of Attica. Since antiquity, Acra Sunion has been the vantage point for the important sea routes both to and from Athens. At a height of 60 meters, it's one of the most beautifully located temples in Greece that was once used by seafarers. Fifteen slender, weather-beaten columns stand on a rocky cliff above Aegis, a remote temple that was dedicated to the god of the sea, Poseidon. The setting captures the unique essence of Greek antiquity. The evening sun descends slowly across the remnants of ancient Greece. The marble of the temple shines golden as though to thank the gods for creating this remarkable city. A city in which both antiquity and the present unite. A symbol of the Occident. Kalispera. Good night, Athens.